Hey Dreamers, this is Saki and welcome to a new video. After some of my big scenes like the Sunken Kingdom of Liberif and Dreamwater City, quite a lot of people asked me how I do my camera paths and in this video I'll be showing you how to use a camera and how to create cutscenes and camera paths for yourself. You just saw another example in the beginning of this video to also show off this scene. I actually wanted to create a basic setting for this tutorial but then I just kind of lost myself in it and it became something, well, a little more polished and I actually like it a lot now. So this will be the setting we'll be using for this tutorial, I really hope you guys like it as well. But now, let's dive in. Okay, so first let's go over the options of the camera and what to do with it. You can find the camera in the cameras and lighting section of the gadget menu. You can just stamp it into your scene and with L1 and X we can tweak into it to move around with and set it to a position where we want it to have. With L1 and Square we can tweak into the menu of it. On the second page we have the controller sensor input. If we disable that we won't be able to move with the character while the cutscene plays and we can also hide our imps if we don't have any imp gameplay. Now on the first page we have the most important options here. We can tweak into the camera and put the menu to the side so we can actually see live what it does when we change the options here. Here we have the focus distance or actually the focus in general so you can see the background's all blurry but we want to set the focus onto our crystal that's why we change the focus distance and I usually set the blurry amount to around 30%. Depends on the scene though. On the bottom we have the black bars which give it this cinematic cutscene look that we also want to activate here. Now this was it for the options of the camera. We'll be moving on now to create a path where the camera is moving on for our cutscene. For this we go into the animation section and get out a timeline. You can open up this timeline and put it everywhere in the scene, it doesn't really matter. You can also drag it longer or shorter depending on how long you want your cutscene to have. Now we go and take a keyframe position it in the timeline on the starting point and you can already see the stop recording button. This is the first step on the cutscene. This is the first point where the cutscene will start. So we tweak into our camera and set it to the position where we want the cutscene to start. When we did that we go on stop recording and now we can copy this keyframe and put it onto a different position in the camera for how long we want the cutscene to take. You can now go on and edit this keyframe so we set the second position of the camera to move. For this we will be, we will be putting it into the position where we want the cutscene to end and you can also change the angle of the camera which is al always a pretty cool look. And then you go on stop recording again. Now we have two positions, we just need to connect these keyframes together. You can press L1 and X between them to do that. And now we created a path that you can see here. It automatically creates a path between the keyframes you set. Let's have a look how this looks like right now. So this already looks quite good but we can make it a lot better for sure. So we have a few different options here still. If we tweak into the second keyframe and set it to keep changes, the camera will stay at the position of the second keyframe after the cutscene ended. In the blend, in the blend type of the, uh, of the keyframes, we can set how the camera will be moving between those keyframes. I set it to the last, this means we start slow, it goes a little bit faster in the middle and ends slow again. Now we edit the first keyframe again to also change the angle of this camera to the other side and with this we create a nice rolling effect. Let's have a look how this looks like now. Now this already looks a lot better. 
So what we can do now is shorten the timeline to the last position of the keyframe so the cutscene ends after this. Now in the next step we will actually make it possible so the cutscene starts whenever the character moves into a specific area. For that we need a trigger zone. The trigger zone is a gadget where you can put anywhere in the scene and it attacks a zone and when a character walks into this zone you can make something happen. On the second page you can change the trigger zone position to a cube, it's not needed but I'll just put it like this for this entrance here. Now we want to get out a counter and this is important because we want our cutscene to only play once. With the counter we make it possible so the trigger zone only really triggers once. We connect the trigger zone to the increase count of the gadget and the target value of it is 1. So whenever we walk into the trigger zone the value goes to 1 and with the counter full we connect it to our timeline. This means that the timeline is only activated when we once go into this trigger zone. Now the only problem is the camera is always on right now, so what we can do about that? First we want to turn the camera off because it is always on like that and then what we do now is we go onto our first keyframe of the timeline edit it again and there we actually turn the camera on. So whenever the timeline gets triggered with the trigger zone then also the camera gets triggered. On the second keyframe we want to disable the camera again because we don't want to stay in it so it's important to have the power of the camera off in the second keyframe. So now let's have a look if it actually makes sense what we did there. <laughs> And it goes back to the character, so it worked perfectly fine. And when we go back into the trigger zone or where the trigger zone is, it won't trigger, everything works fine. But there's one more step we can take to make it a little better still. So we go onto the gadgets and get out the tag. With this tag we want our character to move to the crystal while the cutscene plays. You can use these tags in many different ways, but what we do here is tweak into the tag and rename it to follow me. So every character has a follow me um, setting in their logic and when we activate the follow me inside the character it will actually follow this tag. So what we do is basically go onto our timeline and get out a keyframe where we activate follow me in our character. So now we go back to our character. This is a little cute little character by Media Molecule by the way, it's just for testing. In this um, section of the character you can activate the follow me, you can also set the distance on how close it should walk to the tag and I can also recommend you to, to change the walk speed for the cutscene specifically. But now what we do is make the keyframe longer so it actually um, goes all the way, um, plays all the way while our cutscene plays. And yeah, this is already it. So now let's have a look if it works. Yep, it works perfectly fine. The character stands in front of the crystal and the camera goes back to the character. So the last thing I want to recommend you here is to always use a microchip for your logic. If you use even more logic it can get really messy and you can lose overview. With a microchip you can um, put in all your gadgets that you're using into one chip and then you have an overview of what you actually used, how it is connected and if you want to change something it's actually quite easy. You can also rename gadgets and microchips to your, to your liking. Now last, I just want to give you a quick look on how I created a camera path in the beginning, how you can create dolly shots and long camera paths. 
So here's the timeline that I used. As you can see, I used five keyframes here and yeah, this is not as easy as it looks like. It is easy to create a camera path and it is easy to create a long camera path, but it is really, really hard to make it look good and smooth and even perfect. It can take hours to create a really good camera path and it is a lot of detail work. As you can see, the first camera path or the first keyframe was set behind the camera and then you just go on through the scene. It will automatically create paths between those keyframes and also curves and stuff. I also recommend you to keep the blend type of a long camera path always linear. You can easily mess the velocity up if you change that. And with that, I would like to thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. A lot of effort went into this. If so, please give it a like, some feedback, and definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.